Hey guys, and welcome back to Auction Not Included! Clay's Amazing Space Colony Survival Adventure Extraordinaire! My name is Twitchy and we are in Twitchy's Tremendous Trojan. Yeah, that's the name of the rock that we are trying to build here. I have filled it with a whole bunch of duplicates and we're going around trying to uh, eke our existence out. One of the problems that we have got at the moment is we are having a bit of a waste gas issue. So the vast majority of the things that I'm doing at the beginning of this game is going around and making sure that the waste gases get out out of the areas where they're filling up in particular in places like my gas generator uh it's filling up with oxygen that leaves no room for the carbon dioxide to spill out and then we can't like scrub it and it all backs up and the generators stop working we run out of power and then it's all a big trouble Another thing that we're having trouble with is the anti-entropy device just does not seem to be getting cold in any way, shape or form. So I've turned off the water feed. Unfortunately, the plug, uh, not the plug, sorry, the pipes go literally halfway across the map. So it's going to take a very long time for us to actually watch the water stopping there. So I thought I'd take the moment to have a look to make sure that all the uh, oxygen is still venting safely out into space and keeping an eye on the temperatures up here. As you can see, we're just kind of... Uh, hedging around at about 32 degrees there so we just gotta we just gotta wait and see what happens when we turn that off talking about waiting and seeing what happens yesterday last time however you want to word it we got this bit of research done and one of the research was of course computing and it gave us an extra thing that appears to be somewhat connected to space science so the virtual planetarium is being put up in the base just so that we know what we can do with it I don't know what to do with it I, I literally have never put it down before so we're gonna use this opportunities to have a look i also put down the rock granulizer because i hear it is the way of getting rid of your eggshells i keep having eggshells build up all through my base but if you tell the rock granulizer just to continue making lime somehow lime out of eggshells then that's all good another problem we're having bristle blossoms the plants at the bottom of the screen on the left you can see that the vast majority of them are not growing that's because they're too hot a bit a big problem in my base at the moment is things just being too too hot all right so the last of the water comes a pumping through here we're going to spend a moment looking at the hydrogen in fact we don't even have to spend any time at all looking at the hydrogen the anti-entropy device is already down four five degrees the temperature shift plate behind it only lagging by about a degree behind the actual anti-entropy device uh whilst we are not pumping stuff through and everything's cooling down we're getting like pressures done i'm going to take the opportunity to tidy everything up another thing is we're running out of uh refined materials refined metals so we're going to go through and make sure that all the bits that I put down, all the orders that I put down using them have actually got a material that is accessible to them. Taking a moment to have a look through all the different texts that I had on, on the on the builds, also making sure people have got skills where they can have skills. Uh, particularly looking for rocket engineers. Rocket engineers, rocket navigators. These are the two things that we are after. Once again, having a look in the research. Uh, so I clicked the planetarium, the virtual planetarium, and it turns out that it just took me to the research screen. So it is indeed a third research station. Uh, so that that's nice and easy something for our scientists to uh, use because what do you know it turns out that rocket navigation takes a little bit of research you can't just like set a rocket at the top of your asteroid set it flowing and hope that it will do a wonders so we're staring at the anti-entropy device again because the main thing is I wanted to know that it was actually doing some cooling the problem I had is where I kept on pumping hot water into it uh, it would continuously keep being hot you know this is what happens when you pour hot stuff into an area even if it has an active cooling device in it the heat was going to be in that area before it can get destroyed so uh, this was the confusion i was having i was wondering uh whether it was actually doing any job uh but yes yes it is we can see that it actively is it's just that we are uh are changing such minute quantities of water into cooler devices uh, and doing our best to cool that down pump it back into a, a giant pot of hot stuff and then pump the hot stuff back out so eventually we will cool it down it's just going to take a little bit of a while okay the other thing that we're going to take care of today is our petroleum power plant we've got a little bit of an issue with the fact that the petroleum power plant outputs something like 500 grams of carbon dioxide per whatever it is that they measure these in uh, and the carbon scrubber only deals with like 300 so you need to have two carbon scrubbers per um per petroleum generator it actually works out something like three scrubbers to two generators or something like that i can't i can't remember the exact numbers but these are things that we're gonna have to work on so uh, all down there i want to make uh some way to pump all the water out and some way of scrubbing all the carbon dioxide because these are the two waste products that the petroleum, petroleum generators are cause okay have a look at the anti-entropy device again as we pump the water in as you can see the temperature is raising a soul swiftly unbelievably swiftly we've also got captain subs kind of stuck out here but that's fine with a little bit of 
creative digging and we will get there. Okay, so this is the area that we're going to build the uh, the petroleum generators in. And I think we're going to start with a fresh slate. There, there's, We could kind of replumb and move things around and try and work it into the space that we've got. But in my experience, it just works out a lot better if you start from a clean slate. So that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to clean this entire area out here. Whilst I'm looking at this, I am noticing that we've got a lot of waste gases in here. Uh, waste gases that come from like carbon dioxide and like we've got the, the, the natural gas up there. There's also polluted oxygen above. There's a whole bunch of waste gases in this area that really need to be dealt with. Uh, not just because the, they are waste gases and need to be with but also they're keeping all the heat in here uh this is a hot area and if we can process our atmosphere through pretty quickly this means that, that the at, that the atmosphere doesn't warm up too much uh with will be like knocking it down or destroying it before it actually becomes a problem and this is something that we actually really need to do around the base we've got two of those anti-entropy thermal devices now but the problem with those is that they can only move something like 160 combined btus per second or something like that and i'm fairly sure my base is producing orders of magnitude more than that like literally stick a zero on the end and i think that's how much heat my base is producing especially with the geyser and the oil refinery and just uh, all the things that we are uh, working with here almost all the gas geysers output 150 degrees c which generally works out all right as long as we can uh, eat through the gas quick enough we can keep the temperature down um Sometimes that doesn't work out so well for us. Sometimes it does. Top left of the map, you may have been seeing, seeing me that we've got a little bit of a dig going on up there. There seems to be some sort of room at the very top. Yeah, we can see it there. And I want to go and make my way in there. I have no idea, no idea what's in there. But I've got a feeling the duplicates are going to enjoy it. Back underneath the oil refinery, you can see we've got this little area here that has been dealing with the waste gases for a little bit of time. We've got this pump that pumps all the all the gases that come in out. The um, natural gas gets separated and put sent to the gas generators the carbon dioxide gets separated and also gets like thrown out into the gas generator room so that it can get carbon scrubbed but what i'm actually going to do is put another carbon scrubber down there it turns out we're going to have a lot of carbon scrubbers in the end uh, and that should work out okay so this bottom tank here full of slime lung but i'm not actually that worried about slime lung because slime lung dies in cold and we are running out of water so i'm going to let that bottom tank actually drain out now uh put it into our cold water tank and hopefully in the time it takes to chill down and become usable water all the slime lung would have been destroyed a little bit of research literally came in as we're doing this you can see that we've got the telescope and whatever the space science thingy was there that we uh, we could do so i think what i'm going to do is put the telescope right here now i'm fairly sure we need to put it with uh, good views of the surface because of course there's a telescope and if you don't have line of sight then how are you going to be able to see anything uh, but the way that i'm going to deal with this is by making a giant canyon you can see that i'm going to put ladders either side of the telescope we're going to work our way up and we're going to use all our top notch diggers to make our way up there okay water seems to be leaking everywhere it's definitely an issue that we have with the cold biomes up here thankfully i put certain things in the way to stop the water flowing you can see we've got a tile that's uh, by that power transformer there that stops the water overflowing uh, and uh, we are starting to work on the telescope here outside in space now one of the beautiful things is that my guys have atmospheric suits on to uh, to work with and i'm wondering whether we want to start making the oh what was that big noise? I'm a, you know what? I actually don't know. I was wondering whether we want to make the uh, whole entire of the internal of the asteroid livable so we don't have to worry so much about atmospheric suits coming out of the out of the airlock, but more so going down below or up top. This might be something that I work on at some point, but I also feel the fact that we've got the, the, the atmosphere suits already working, then that, that's probably good enough. Okay, so another problem that we're going to start being having is the fact that these natural gas generators, as I say, output an incredibly hot heat, uh, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, machines really close to each other in particular the pump and the filter uh, up the top that one right there uh, a little bit worried that they are going to be producing heat on each other and also uh, having troubles uh, dissipating the heat well enough uh, but there is a problem with the plan that I'm originally starting to do. So what I was going to do, sorry, was to move the pump on one uh, and then put a wall down in between. But as you can see, trying to put the uh, the heavy watt switch plate thing into a wall, I need a little bit more room than I'm actually allowing myself. So we're going to go ahead and deal with that. Just build a little bit of extra space. Um, <coughs> turns out maybe 
maybe I was a little uh, little misled and I could have just quite easily have put it where it was and I was just trying to put it on top of a gas pipe. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to just ignore that and carry on with the plan that I did because it works in the end. So that's all good. Looking at the air, looking at all the pipes and stuff, everything is starting to back up. So I'm a little bit worried that we are going to end up having at some point a situation where the uh, natural gas generators don't carry on turning over because, of course, if the uh, if they can't vent their carbon dioxide, they get a pipe full scenario and if the pipe is full, they can't output and everything just kind of grinds to a horrendous halt and when your power grinds to a halt you've got big problems that is exactly why in that little area there that we were looking at uh, on the top left I put that um, pump that took all the anything that's not carbon dioxide out of there just to make sure all my bases are covered because we were talking about how the carbon dioxide was backing up I'm going to make sure that the water reclamation system has its own little bit of power system here just in case now obviously the hamster wheel is by far the most inefficient form of power when it comes to duplicate times but if all else fails it's just we're just going to need it you know if, if the carbon dioxide backs up and we don't get any power we want to make sure our water still flows because I don't want to die from lack of water that, that would just I mean, that would be a sad day. That would be a sad, sad day. We have survived for 360... Oh, look, we've nearly made it an entire year. 364 days so far. Uh, and, and if we were to die at this point, I, I would be very, very sad. I should probably point out that the main reason we want the water turning is actually so that we can feed the carbon scrubbers. Because that's kind of like a self-perpetuating system there. If the carbon scrubbers die, then the water dies. Uh, yeah, the power dies, sorry. And if the power dies, the water dies. So you gotta, you got to keep these things going around. One thing I am thinking is, hey, let's just vent all this carbon dioxide into space. We've got a line going all the way... Or rather, we can have a line going all the way up. And all right, here is where the problems are really starting. Because we've got no power, because the carbon dioxide is backing up, we haven't got any power for the atmospheric suits. Because we don't have any power for the atmospheric suits, people cannot go outside the airlock and work on the system. So that is a thing that needs to be worked on. Speaking of things that need to be worked on, don't you feel like we can't pump enough water out at any one time? I agree. We have not been pumping anywhere near enough water out at any one time. So we need to try and work on that. Build crews are absolutely killing it up this, uh, up this little corridor here. We've got Wise, we've got Sir Steve, I think we've got Cubic there, like really just going to town and making sure everything works out A-OK. -okay. Of course, on our way up the corridor, we end up at the uh, mushroom farm, and I thought the fact that we had a branch of the mushroom farm was making my carbon dioxide stop right there. It turns out, no, that's not the case. I thought it was a branch. No, taking away the branch doesn't fix that. So hey, let's try a gas valve. Let's see if it's just a pressure thing. Maybe we can repressurize with the magic of a valve. I literally don't know at this point, um, but whilst I was going around looking at these things, I also noticed that I may have put a gas gas bridge down the wrong way around uh, it's a it's a standard problem a problem that we have all the time uh, talking of problems atmosphere uh, sorry uh, not atmospheric suits duplicates inside the gas generators without atmospheric suits that's a bad one okay so the carbon dioxide does finally flow up it's going to join the oxygen I, I would love it if we could actually make a pressurized zone up there i've got a feeling i need to put some drywall down up in space though so that we can make a like, little containing area because at the moment any gases that get pumped up there are immediately vented look at this out into the voids and are destroyed uh if i ever like go ahead and show you the breathable overlay uh, you can see that there are gases being thrown out but are very quickly being consumed. Okay, so all the power seems to be flowing again. With that one pipe connected, we have got everything working A-OK. -okay. I'm a little bit worried about some of the uh, the gas bubbles, if you will, some of the trapped parts in the pipes. But as they overpressurize, eventually it all gets cleaned out. Uh, one of the problems we had with the power dying was, of course, all the water reclamation went down, which means that the... Uh, the toilets and stuff backed up so we got a few messes to deal with but mostly we actually got through that um pretty well we got through that without taking a serious serious damage okay so with this pump uh, sorry with that tank emptying i'm actually going to start working on how we can go about uh putting a second pump in there because as i say we can't we can't pull enough water out of the tanks at any one time uh just having one of these single pumps uh, you can see that we did that into our main tank here we put down two pumps and that was very much 
much necessary to keep up with the water flow that we've got going. Okay, you remember me saying about the rock garanizer, how we were going to set it to uh, process all the eggshells? Done that. Uh, and we're now going around cleaning up all the polluted water on the base because a lot of people made messes. Now, for some reason at this point, I completely forgot that I had some ratios to worry about. Um, I was like, yeah, 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 we need two carbon scrubbers per, um, per generator. So I put two carbon scrubbers down and then put four generators down. I, I, I really don't. I, I should point out that I play this game very late at night. It's probably about half one, two o'clock in the morning at this point. And every now and then this leads me to forget what exactly what it is I need to set up like for the uh, for the surroundings, the infrastructure, if you will. I'm just like, I need power. Let's get power. Uh, I, yeah, that did, didn't really work out as well for me as it should have. But, you know, we can all just sit here chuckling to ourselves knowing that the infrastructure can only really support one thing. Uh, okay, so more waste gases to be dealt with. We'll put in a pump and we'll just uh, make do with it. For some reason, we can't... Um uncover the water, mop the water that was in front of that sieve, so I just put some flow tiles down, some mesh tiles down so that we can just let the water pour away. It's probably something that we need to do uh, pretty much anywhere that we are in a cold biome, is to make sure that anything that is built on a tile is actually built on a mesh tile, so any water that flows in just flows down into the tile and, uh, and disappears. Okay, let's get this second line in. You can see that there are places where we can't build the pipe. Alright, let's move away from that. Uh, and so we're going to have duplicates going down and uh, working on all of uh, that there. Got a bunch of hot carbon dioxide in this area as we've been talking about so let's get the uh, get the pump working on and cleaning this whole area out here. More people making messes. I mean basically at the moment all we need to do is just wait out the uh, the water reclamation system. Uh, it turns out both our tanks are full and so our bad water is building up which probably means somewhere we need to have a bad water tank, a polluted water tank just so that we can pour some in and then make sure the sieves are dealing with it. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a feeling I actually want to completely rebuild a reclamation system somewhere. I want to build a, a polluted water tank with like four or five sieves in between, each leading to a different cold water tank. Uh, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. Hot water tank, in fact. In fact, maybe either we want some sort of way of figuring out what germs are inside the pipe and sending it to the appropriate place. I don't know if that is actually a thing. I know we can sense whether there are any germs, but I don't know if we can sense what type of germ. I will have to have a look in that at some point. If, if it is a thing, it's a, it's a super end game thing that we can't do right now. Throwing down the first ever oil well of my game. Not just this game, of my game entirely. I've never actually managed to get one of these down. I've always just made do with the piles of oil that are laying around. Uh, but now's the time. Let's go and do it. Uh, one thing I've noticed is there's this whole bunch of... Um, gas down there. You can see uh, with the oil well there was a whole bunch of gas down there and I was worried uh, about um, breaking and breaking the seal and letting it all out. Uh, it turns out that the oil down there was making a pretty good uh, water lock, a liquid lock, so I didn't have to worry too much about that. Of course relying on a liquid lock when the liquid you're using is the liquid you want to be pumping out might not be the smartest plan so at some point we're going to have to go through, put some walls or some doors down or something like that. Uh, I started putting down some orders to get the telescope uh, visible to the sky or the sky visible to the telescope whichever way around you want to do that it turns out that is a very very quick job to be done and in fact we have now got the first telescope built uh, I thought I was going to click on the open star map but it turns out no that was not the thing I was going to do we also have like is that some gases that need to be pumped into there I'm not even sure which gas is we need to use but uh, I obviously did at the time because I immediately set up a pipe so I assume that I've got the right one so the whole dig order done let's go down and have a look and see at some of the other things that are going down uh, pipes being laid down for that second pipe people still making a mess I'm not entirely sure why our duplicates are still making a mess I think it's because actually now that I uh, remember what was going on both our hot, cold water tanks or hot water tanks are actually in the middle of emptying so we have nowhere for our dodgy water to go so we yeah we, we got to work on that that is what, one of the reasons why I want to increase the water flow uh, from at least one of the tanks so we can really really start shifting that stuff out you can see that what actually what had happened is we had taken that that water down just a little bit so that I could then take down the insulated tiles around it and go and replace all the uh, well not replace sorry build the pump 
the extra pump that we have in there. So hopefully, very soon, literally when these last two pumps get uh, pipes get put into place, we can start shifting double the amount of water out of there, which is pretty good. All right, we are in a made a mess loop. It's it's not the worst thing in the world to be in because of course we can just like mop all the stuff up and be all good. But uh, yeah, it is a horrific loop, one that we have to uh, try and wait out here. Uh, one of the main problems we've got is waiting for people to go all the way across the map to deliver the items. Uh, and then nighttime happens. And of course, because the delivery got done before, uh, uh, after nighttime fell, everybody, all the duplicates are asleep, so no one's available to set the big priorities up. You've got to wait for the next night for that to happen. And there we go. The water doth flow from two pumps. This should probably, hopefully, empty that tank out twice as quick. You know, it's, it's going to be diminishing returns from there on. You know, the, first, the moment you uh, go from one pump to two, you get twice as quick, and then you add a third, and it's not quite twice as quick. That's half again. Uh, so, you know, it, it's all good. We won't be putting too many more in there, though. I say that. I'm almost almost want to guarantee that by, I don't know, cycle 1000, it's not going to be enough and we're going to have to try and deal with it. So I'm particularly interested in this little patch of uh, polluted water we've got in the side of the big cold tank down the bottom left. And I uh, kind of want to get rid of that. So we're going to try and uh, try and get someone walking out of that door at some point. It's a big play. It's a play that's going to take a lot of work, but uh, it's a play we're going to do. Zedtech busy digging through the space area there. Absolutely beautiful. I, I love it. I'm not sure who it is we're going to be taking for this. Oh, first, of course, we need to build a way down there. The problem that we have is that the duplicates can't just walk through unlimited amounts of water. I'm not entirely sure why when they've got the atmospheric suits and stuff, but they can't. So we need to drop a ladder down in the appropriate area to make it happen. Still not quite click that that's too many oil um, generators. I think I actually won't before the end of this episode. Okay, so now the duplicates are there. Bam! Walk out and get rid of that single bit of uh, polluted water that was in there. I did notice that <clears throat> got a little bit of... Uh Food poisoning in there. Not not feeling great about that. Thankfully, the fact that it is clean water means that the food poisoning will be dying anyway. But that's uh, yeah, that's that's not the best. I've got to say, it is not the best whatsoever. Okay, watching this water in the bottom tank drain out, we are getting very very close to emptying it out. But you can see the problem here. All, I mean, literally all of the uh, polluted water has backed up. Uh, because we've got a bit of a loop going on with our polluted water, I've decided that what I'm going to do is to smash down some of the pipe that we actually put up only a couple of episodes ago. Um, <coughs> yeah, the loop doesn't work so well in sort of the pressure simula simulation, if you will. There's, the, there's a real problem with actually being able to pump stuff up both sides. Um, it, it just doesn't seem to like it at all. Power is flowing well, the water is flowing well. In fact, you can watch the level drop literally in real time. That's pretty cool. And watching this go up in real time is also pretty cool. Uh, checking the polluted, uh, what the, I say the pollution level, checking the uh, disease level in there. Uh, there seems to be nowhere near as much in the cold tank as there is in the hot tank. So, you know, that that's kind of okay. We, could, we can definitely live with that. Uh, changing my build materials here just to make sure we are dealing with uh, local materials. But we are actually, in fact, starting to run out. You can see gold amalgam, metal ore, top right. It, it's grayed out. It's grayed out. We, we don't have any. So uh, sending some people to do some digging. Uh, and of course, we've still got the duplicates trying to clear out the telescope. That is, in fact, the last aim for today is to try and get that telescope clear so that we can start getting some actual destinations for our rocket setting. Because, of course, whilst we don't have the rocket actually built yet, we'd like to know where we're going. Like People were looking at the moon for, oh, I don't know, two or three years before we sent a rocket out there, right? <laughs> Low humor. Anyway, these guys are digging up and I'm a little bit worried about like all this loose material that keeps falling down. Uh, not mo not only because it covers up the telescope and then we can't use the telescope, but more importantly, it has this tendency to cover up the ladders and then our people can't get back down. And that's a, that's a problem. If people are stranded in space, I think we're gonna have a big issue there. End of another day and we're gonna watch everybody chilling out around the recreation area. Uh, turns out, Food is actually a bit more of an issue than I realized it was. Uh, this is mainly because I told people not to eat the lice loaf. And you remember me mentioning how the bristle berries were not, not being grown because of the temperature? So these two things are coming together. Thankfully, we are mainly surviving on fried mushroom. Uh, but I, I, I need to get some of that bristle berry on the go. All right, cleaning up the, the evening's mess. 
I suppose that's the only way to, to word it now is cleaning up the evening's mess. Uh, we're going to try our best to uh, make sure that you know the whole place doesn't get too infected and that we can deal with the water uh, eventually. Uh, like the thing is, we are just waiting for that water tank to empty, so we will get there in the end. Okay, so there's a few um, a few materials in here that I actually know nothing about. Things like mafic rock. I, d I don't even know what mafic rock is. Like IRL, is mafic rock actually a thing? Because you know we get igneous rock and sedimentary rock and stuff like that. These are these are real things in the real world. But I've never heard of mafic. You know what? Let me go look it up. Ah, oh, disappoint. That is just a subcategory of igneous rock, rich in magnesium or iron. Thus the name is a portmanteau of magnesium and ferric, the la Latin for iron. Uh, but things like gabbro and uh, basalt and stuff like that, these are mafic rocks. Uh, so, turns out I did know what they were, I just didn't know the classification system for them. So, I mean, a little disappointed, but also at the same time, yeah, cool, new type of rock, that's great. Can we rename igneous, igneous rock now? Because that, that would be useful if we could have a different type of igneous rock rather than the two types of igneous rock. I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking this here. So we're going to put down the automation on the other pump in the cold water tank because it was... Um, was pumping out some dirty water that that's not what we want that is not what we want at all but this now means that we have one of our cold tanks empty and the water crisis is over uh, uh, over in inverted commas uh, because we are uh, just about to be able to start flowing some of the polluted water back out we appear to have cracked the dome and there is a lot of a lot of explosions and falling rocks and bad stuff seems to be happening up there. But this is why we built the telescope in a uh, in a canyon. And look, we, we've, we've now got targets. We can now have a look at the map and see where it is we're going. I wish I'd said that whilst the map was still up. But things seem to be going well there. The digging on the, on the left, not so much. But yeah, let's have a look at this. So we, it doesn't have line of sight, but occasionally it does. It all depends on when the rocks are falling. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. We're going to work on that rocket that that's what we're working on towards before the release date uh i want to have the rocket done so i'll see you then when we're gonna do that bye